Good morning, guys. We're in Berlin in our cute little apartment hotel. We had a very delicious breakfast, as you can see. And now we are... Hmm, what are we doing now? I think this little lady in the background would like to get some new snacks. So I'm going to my favorite dog store in Berlin and we're gonna spoil our little girl as we love to do. And then we're meeting a friend. You know, this is like the... the... <laughs> It's okay if you want to be part of the video. You know, the funny thing is, Ru looks huge. Like, she looks so big. And she's only seven and a half kilos. He's tiny. She's a small little girl. But she looks so big. Look. How is this seven and a half kilo? <laughs> she looks so funny. <laughs> Oh, you're so cute. I just wanted to say that I love Berlin a lot. You know, when people ask me about it, I always describe it as like a Williamsburg in Europe. So you know, the Williamsburg in New York, this is the European version. I feel like the vibe is quite similar to New York in a different way, of course, on a much smaller scale. But it's very international. People are super open-minded. Like the thing about places like New York and Berlin, you can live a thousand different lives here. You know what I mean? And I love how people are so unbothered here. I love it. I always tell my friends that I'm going like through a park and let's say I'm filming myself or I'm on the phone and like nobody looks at me. Like one person is doing their yoga, another person is doing Tai Chi, another person is drawing. Nobody even looks at me. Everybody's in their own world and I love it. By the way, I have very cute new Chanel earrings. I call them my good luck earrings. Come on, good luck. Come to me, come to mama. Also, I have to show you my bag. How beautiful is she? She's so beautiful. I love her. Also guys, do you recognize the sweater? Do I have my, my OG watchers here? Let me know in the comments if you recognize it. I wanna see how well you guys are paying attention, okay? All right. But where's the secret? Uh, no. It's not here? No, it's always sold out. Oh my god. It's always sold out. It's the best. Yeah. Okay, we got a little ball and we got um, puppy sticks. They smell awful, but we really lost them. Unfortunately, they didn't have my favorite or Ruth's favorite. How would you translate it? It's like a warm. Like a warm? Warm fear. <laughs> <laughs> warm fear, yeah. It's like warm fear. I don't know if there's something. And they helped a lot with. Now it's a lot better anyway, but like Rue had a little bit of stinky breath. Need a bit of stinky breath, but now she doesn't. So yeah. It's okay. So it's it wasn't even that urgent, okay. but it's nice to have. Where are we going now? Bookstore? Now what time is it? Okay. Oh yeah, let's check it out. There's a bookstore called. Do you read me? Let's go. There. Hey guys! Hi! We are on the way to somewhere. <laughs> Follow us along to know where we're going. 
And we're on a little coffee break because yeah. that's important when you drive. Jürgen is, by the way, a really good driver. I just have a few questions for you. I thought a coffee break would be so nice to get to know each other better. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after, after 12 years, <laughs> we should take the time now. <laughs> okay, my question is, what's something that nobody agrees with you? It's such a hard question because I'm so agreeable. I actually, the problem with me is I am really easily, not persuadable, but like I want to then find a way that we have a common ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you think men are superior to women. No, 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 that's something <laughs> I really don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody agrees with you because God is a woman. Anyway, if you could meet anyone in this world today, who would you meet? Mm, so we just listened to a podcast with Jeff Bezos. And for some reason, I think that he sounds like a fun guy to meet. <laughs> so, for example, Elon is also like super interesting, but he's also kind of so special that it's... I think Jeff seems to be a little bit more normal. <laughs> I think sense. none of them is normal. No, of course not, because they like obviously... They, they think in very special ways but like okay level two which yeah. woman would you want to meet I think actually our former chancellor oh. is somehow <laughs> interesting Jürgen do better you cannot think of anybody like more interesting who you would love to meet see you live in a man's world yeah it is very I mean Taylor <laughs> Taylor Swift because you know I would be like so obsessed <laughs> no because she was, she's also I mean she just became Time Magazine person of the year for a reason I think she's person of the century yeah so me. I think that's a very interesting female person to meet I'm sure there's more but yeah you're right it's like very male centered what male person would you want to meet <laughs> i would love to meet sam altman and like i want to learn how his brain works i'm really so intrigued by people who have a very unique way of thinking and this is also what lex asked in a podcast to jeff bezos he's like how how do you think and jeff couldn't even put it into words you know when you meet these special type of people and they just think differently that i'm like obsessed with this like in a parallel universe i'm actually studying how people think and especially how very very unique and special people think because i'm so intrigued by unique ways of seeing and understanding the world but yeah so for example with jeff it's so interesting because if you look at his childhood he's always been a builder like he was working on a ranch or like he grew up on a ranch and he would fix things problem solve build things be super resourceful i feel like our entire life and especially our childhood really dictates our way as an adult but by accident like the small little things that we experience as children and teenagers dictate our life later on not completely i think you can always have conscious influence but subconsciously there's so much luck involved in our later path that we cannot really rationalize because you know you can only understand things backwards and not forward and that's what i find so interesting anyway why are we always it's so hard to answer a question to the point <laughs> <laughs> and fast if you had to trade lives with one person who would you trade it with with you <laughs> Why? Because then I could finally feel how it is <laughs> to be so creative. LOL! <laughs> to be fair, you never want to really trade with someone else, no? I think it's... No. There's this one story, I don't know if I told you this before, but there's a story when like a monk or something like collects all humans in the world in one room. Huge room. And then he tells the people, Okay, guys, put all your put all your problems in front of you, like make them physically visible, like put them all in front of you. So everybody unpacks their problems, puts them in front of them. And then the monk says, okay, now everybody collects the problems that he wants to have. And people look around and see the problems that other people have and they run to grab their things, like their own problems, because they realize that, you know, the grass is always green on the other side and everybody deals with their own shit and they would rather keep their problems instead of taking the problems of other people and i think it's because you are familiar with your own problems that's why you rather keep your own <laughs> and also because we don't know what other people go through like we think that like our problems are huge and blah 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 and we really know very little about other people you know yeah. what i mean oh that's true okay one last question if you could teach only three things to your future child what would they be first of all would be humor and don't take everything too seriously love that i think i'm very good at this no 
I feel like you are when you're in your best self. Yeah. Would you say you are very good at this? I am when I am at my best self. <laughs> But you know, that's the thing. Like, it's so easy to be these things and do these things when you're doing good. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy to be a kind, funny, understanding. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy to be these virtues and to be a good person when you're doing well. The question is, who are you when you're not doing well? Yeah. And then one thing and I'm not very good at this, but I would love to teach it, <laughs> is to be reliable. And if you say something, that you do it. Like be, how do you walk say, the walk, talk. exactly, walk the talk. And I struggle with this a lot. And I'm speaking about I this also with my therapist. I don't think so. Huh? What? I think you struggle with it a little bit. But if you actually weren't a man of your word the majority of the time, I would definitely not spend time with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, but then... Uh, you want to get better. Right? Yeah, I want to get even better. <laughs> Well, not even. <laughs> <laughs> because I think there's like no matter who you deal with like people are really really understanding whatever you go through and I think there's always a solution for whatever there is and I think most of us are also like with their job or whatever and especially us we're not saving lives but so so nothing is ever that crazy but the worst is what has that to do if with not, it? <laughs> no I think it's always like if you say something and then are not able to deliver that's always what frustrates people but that's more on like a to-do list level I yeah. think That's why I, I said we are not saving lives. No, but the whole thing about walk the talk, it's on a much deeper level. It's about your values, it's about your character. It's more about kind of like who are you when nobody's looking. Yeah. But that's why I said in the beginning, reliability, not walk the talk. No, I was just thinking if reliability is a, is a good word. Like, is that the second biggest thing you want to teach your child? Or is it something deeper? Because like reliability, maybe accountability to be accountable. It's not the same. I mean, it, it's not the same, but it goes way deeper than being reliable. Well, maybe you're right. You know, I'm just thinking next. There's no right or wrong. That's right. <laughs> Um, and the last one is to walk the talk <laughs> <laughs> because that's really important to me as well so you mean to work smarter <laughs> not harder and say the same answer twice yeah which is also true I think you should always work smarter not harder don't you think 100% 100 what are your three things um, number one is self love I think it's so important because if you don't learn it as a child it's gonna be very hard when you're older especially again when times get rough you know i would say that i generally love myself a lot but when times get rough i see that there's a little bit of a gap that i need to work on but generally like the ability to love yourself and others it's a huge one because kind of goes back to connection like being able to connect with People being able to connect to your highest self, being able to connect to the world around you, which is love. So like that's like the number one thing. Number two, I would say is problem solving. I think problem solving is it's like a skill that's like kind of a lost art. People are so true. Even me, like when I talk about people, me or us included, You expect everything to be not easy, but like quicker to solve. And well, problem solving is just like something we all deal with for the rest of our lives. You will never suddenly not have to problem solve. But I think it's even in small things, like just oh, be everything. quick, be agile, like try to think of something that... It's It, it blows my mind how few people have the ability to problem solve. And especially nowadays, we already have all this technology. Yes. Like sometimes yes. people are too lazy to Google. I don't <laughs> even think it's laziness. It's a mindset thing. Like, and that's what I'm saying. It's a lost art. We need to bring back problem solving. And it's a skill that needs to be nurtured. And it needs to also be perceived as something that's not negative. Like problems are not necessarily negative. Of course, there are very bad and negative problems. But having something that you need to figure out that's not a bad thing like you can have the attitude that it's actually a good challenge okay so we have love self-love we have problem-solving skills and then okay i know i think 
the third thing I would teach my child is to really, really focus on building a great support system. So really invest in friendships, really invest in relationships. Like nurturing relationships is also a lost art. I think that's something we're quite good at. If I look at what makes my life the richest and why I am successful and why I will only be more successful no matter what I'm dealing with or what life throws at me is because we have an incredible support system and we are building this even further and I think it's quite easy to have a support system when you're younger and the older you get the more effort you need to put into it and that's something I would teach my child from a very early age it's so important to invest in relationships and friendships and family like all these things are so valuable because we're literally genetically conditioned to thrive off relationships like people who live the longest they live the longest because they have a really good support system like they are part of a very strong community i think that's key yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay we need to continue all Ooh. right guys talk to you soon